Fat Shark H D O. The O standing for OLED. This is the first FPV goggle made with OLED disc screens. I'll talk a little bit more about that, but today I just want to do an unboxing and initial thoughts on this new set of goggles that Fat Shark sent me to check out. How do I? Well, as with all things in this like cellophane wrapping. So. Peeling off the wrapping, got a nice box here. The, I believe it slides out, so slide off the printed sleeve. And now you've got your kind of white case that everything sits in. And the goggles come in, uh, in an actual carrying case. You get a cool carrying case. This has their new logo on it. What else? We've got some stickers. Uh, info sheet with like a QR code to download manuals and things like that and a QC guaranteed card thing. The good stuff. Unzipping the case. And these are the goggles. You got a cleaning cloth, that's nice. The battery. Um, I don't usually use the Fat Shark LiPo batteries. I usually make my own goggle batteries out of 18650 cells and a 3D printed case. And I'll leave a link to that video on this channel in the description if you want to check out the battery I use on the regular. But this battery is nice. You've got a LED indicator that shows you how charged it is. And what's really cool is there's actually a USB port. Can you see that? There's a USB port in this corner right up here. So you can actually charge this battery using USB, which is really nice. The goggles themselves um, feels just as good, if not better, than any set of Fat Sharks that I've held. Um, you got your fan up top, it says HDO up there, if it will focus. If you're at all familiar with Fat Shark goggles, it seems like it's pretty much the same deal. You got volume buttons and channel buttons, um, a little joystick for, I, it says display control, so I'm pretty sure that's for doing the uh, brightness, contrast, and then another joystick to control the DVR. It comes with the leather, not the foam, pre-installed on the faceplate. I actually use a leather padding on the goggles I currently use, so that's nice. I really like it a lot better than the foams that a lot of goggles use. Um, so yeah, this is it. This is the Fat Shark HDO. Uh, I guess, let me see as far as comfort goes. As far as comfort goes, this is, it's nice. I mean, as nice as Fat Sharks always are, I think I don't think this is any different case than what they've been using. Um, to provide a little bit of context, I'm actually not a current Fat Shark user. I fly FPV using SkyZone goggles. Actually, I don't want to do it side by side. Yeah, the Fat Sharks have less pressure on the nose, so I gotta say the comfort is better. Um, and I've kind of always thought that. I've always used these SkyZone goggles because there's no muss or fuss with these. The diversity receivers are built into the goggles themselves, so you just pull out of the box, plug in a battery, and it works. And as far as I've seen, the diversity that's built into this is as good or, in my opinion, better than many of the receiver modules out there that you need to put in fat sharks to make them work. It, it comes down to there's a difference in product philosophy between SkyZone and Fat Shark, where SkyZone just kind of provides an out of the box, it works, whereas Fat Shark actually provides a more flexible option. Um, there is no receiver built into the goggle itself. You have these, I don't know how you open them. 
Oh boy. There you go. You have these module bays and you insert the receiver into the goggle and that's how you actually get the um, FPV functionality. So out of the box, these really are just fancy screens for your eyes that are designed with the intent of using an FPV receiver module that plugs in. These sky zones have never let me down. I have a whole video on my main channel, really before I started doing this product and technical centric stuff on this second channel. I made a whole, I uh, actually made two vlogs about these. I'll link these if you're, if you're curious about this, but they've always worked really well. Um, but I have always kind of wanted to switch to Fat Shark. Fat Shark is much more present in the FPV community. They sponsor events. A lot of pilots enjoy using the products. They're, they are a great product. They have good product support. It's just, it's a company that I really want to get behind. And I do support Fat Shark as a company, but as far as the product goes, just what I had been looking for was something that I didn't have to muss with modules and stuff. This just works out of the box. It has all the features that I want, like a built-in band scanner. I mean, I don't want to make this a review about this, but, um, Everything that I want, I just got this out of the box without having to mess with modules. However, I've always felt that if an FPV module or if a Fat Shark goggle came out that offered a significant advantage over the sky zones that I had been using, I would be really keen on switching. And this just might be the goggle to do it because as I mentioned, this is the first goggle with OLED displays and that is actually special. So typically LCD displays, what that means is there uh, is a backlight and then there's an array of pixels in front of that backlight. And the pixel essentially changes what spectrum of the light is blocked. So if the pixel is meant to be red, it blocks out all other colors but red and red light passes through. If it's meant to be black, that pixel attempts to block out all the light and it's black, but it never actually goes completely black, if, if that makes sense. So the advantage of OLED is that rather than there being a backlight, each pixel is actually a very, very small OLED. And the LED itself shines the color that it's meant to show. And if it's meant to be black, it actually doesn't illuminate at all. So rather than the image being a filter for a backlight, the image itself is actually provided by illuminating pixels. So what that should mean is that you have deeper blacks, brighter whites, you'll have better contrast, you'll have better color, crisper image. Um, you see this technology on really high-end expensive TVs. So for it to already kind of be making its way into FPV is totally exciting. So when I kind of heard about these things, I was very keen to try them. I actually don't have a module for these though, so I can't even try them right now. Aside from the OLED, the specs do look really nice. I mean, the display itself is is a much higher resolution than what is typically put into, into goggles. I mean, we will be feeding an analog low resolution display in from our typical FPV setups. So I'm hoping that still looks good even though the display itself, I think it's, I think it's like 720 HD. Um, but something that is cool is there's like an HDMI port. So you can plug in an HD signal and get, I mean like you could watch movies on this. Uh, what I'm really keen on doing is using this to play simulators, right? Um, you could wear the goggles, plug your computer in via the HDMI port, and then actually play the simulator in the goggles. I think that sounds like a fun thing to do. But as I've mentioned, the goggles that I have require no external receiver. So what that means is I don't actually have a receiver. So I'm gonna have to go pick up one to do some testing. Um, and that, that kind of leaves me with the, the issue that I've had and, and why I haven't you know, jumped onto the Fat Shark bandwagon earlier. It's like, I don't really know what receiver to get. Honestly, everyone tells you something different and they all believe that what they use is the best thing and then they still have problems with it. <sighs> there are some cool receivers coming out like the Clearview receiver and the, um, the Rapid Fire receiver. It's funny that all this stuff kind of came out at the same time because I was just waiting for a really cool goggle offering or a really special receiver op offering to make me want to switch to a product where I to switch to this stuff. I'll probably just have to pick up some basic module to hold me over, but I would be interested in getting one of those high-end uh, Clearview or Rapid Fire modules. I will do a quick test as to just kind of what it looks like plugging it in, I guess. So, I do need to put in my contacts. All right. Just insert the battery into the side pouch here. 
Actually, I want to be wearing it for the first plug-in. Am I missing something? Oh, there's a cover on the barrel connector. <coughs> Now we can Oh boy, that's bright Well, yeah, it's a black display. I was hoping there'd be like a menu or something I could Guys, I I couldn't help myself. I had to try the goggles out somehow and I'm kicking myself for not setting up a camera. So first off, I was recording out in my living room and then I didn't set up a camera again in here because I'm running the 3D printer, so it's annoying and loud. But what I did, is, oh God. What I did is I found some cords and stuff and I hooked up, like I mentioned, my goggles via the HDMI to my laptop. Now, I, I don't actually have a SIM working well on my laptop, but I was like, you know what I'll do? I'll just play one of my flight videos and. I was blown away by this screen, dude. It is so sick. I wish there was a good way I could show you, but I'm just watching some, some FPV in here. Dude. It's such a nice screen. Like, the darks are so dark. It's very crisp. The color is, gr like, between looking at my laptop and looking at the goggles, I mean... It might be better in the guy. I don't know. I'm just, oh, I'm so impressed. I wish I had been recording because as soon as I hit play and started watching like my flight in this, I, oh man, is there any way I can? So I'm just gonna try to hold my phone up. Okay, there we go. I'm telling you guys, this doesn't, doesn't do this justice, but hopefully it gives you a kind of a loose idea of what we're working with. It looks, it looks really nice. Wow, this is cool. All right, yeah, I, shoot, I have so many things I'm supposed to do today, but I, I think I might just run to the, uh, run to the store and pick up a module right now so I can test these. So yeah, definitely stay tuned for another video with impressions after I actually fly these goggles and leave a comment if you have any questions about these goggles that I can address in the follow-up video. So yeah, part two coming soon. It's cool stuff.